Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now, I wanna give you a little lecture on indexing in JavaScript. And so what I'm gonna do is create a file called indexing.js. And let's begin. And so you're probably wondering, what does indexing refer to? Well, to answer that question, I'm gonna need an example. And what I'll do is create the string marker. And of course, just to start, why don't I just console.log it? Nothing too fancy here. Why don't we just run this file to make sure it's working? So I'm gonna save this. So you want to open up your terminal and then make sure your terminal's right next to your file. So if I do ls, I should be right next to indexing.js. If you're not, then you should cd next to it. And now I can run my file using node and I'll say the name of the file indexing.js. There I see marker printed out. And so we've been using strings quite a bit so far in the course. And what you'll probably recognize is a string could have many characters, right? If I wanted to access a single character of this string, what I can use is an index. So some new syntax over here, instead of just saying marker, let me say marker square bracket, and then inside I'll write zero. What this will do is give me like the zeroth character of this string. And when I run this, I get back the M. Now, if I change this to one, I'll get another character. And notice the pattern you're starting to see. And so when we have a string that has multiple characters, those characters are positioned at indices, right? Indices is just the plural of index. And so what you'll also recognize is that those indices start at zero. So if I want to count the indices of the string marker, they go zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So that's just something you'll have to kind of get over. Uh, in programming, we usually start counting things at zero. So just bear with it. So just for fun, let me grab another index of the string. Let me grab index four. So I'll run this and take a guess what it's going to be. It's gonna be the E, right? Because when I count my indices, they go zero, one, two, three, four. And do understand how this code evaluates, right? So technically this is just a number value. You can obtain that index through any means you want. So I can really just do like two plus two over here. I know that two plus two evaluates to four, so this would still be getting uh, the character at index four, right? So why don't we work in some variables like we learned in the previous lectures. So let's say I had some string variable and it was the string potato. And then from here, what I'll do is I'll console.log a few indices of it. So let me console.log the last index, which would be this one over here, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, index 5. So print out string index 5. And when I run that, I should get the O. Nothing too fancy there. Now let's say you use like an invalid index on this string. So I know that the biggest index I can use that's valid for a potato is 5, apparently. If I put 6 in, I wonder what happens. Let's give that a run. What you're gonna get back is undefined. What you're gonna get back is undefined because there is no character at index six. So whenever you use like an illegal index of a string, watch out for that undefined value. This also holds true with like a negative number. So let's say I did like negative two here. There is no negative second index of a string. So that will also give back an undefined. So now I wanna go over a few patterns that you'll find pretty useful as you deal with strings and their indices. So instead of string at index five, what I'll say on the inside of the brackets is a nice longer expression. So I'll say string of string dot length minus one. So when I look at code like this, I must evaluate the stuff inside of the brackets first, right? So in particular, what is string dot length? Well, that's just the number of characters in potato, which should evaluate to six. Then I do six minus one, which is five. And that'll give me the character at index five, right? So that should be this O over here. So I'll bring it back to the general form. We'll make sure that that works. And I do get back the O. This is actually a nice general pattern we can use to get the last character of any string. So let's say I change the string to cat. When I run this code, it should still give me the last character of cat, which is going to be the T, right? So here it's doing three minus one, which is two. And I count my indices, zero, one, two, I grab the T. And so notice what this pattern is saying. Uh, we know that the length of a string is going to be the number of characters but the last index is always going to be one less than the length. Because although cat has a length of three, when I count its indices, I begin at zero. So I go zero, one, two. So notice that we have to subtract one over here. That's gonna be really, really important. In other words, something that would be invalid is if you said string of string dot length, right? That would be too large of a number, which we know now gives undefined. Let's go over another pattern that we'll find pretty useful. So I'm gonna extend my string a little bit. I'll make this string cats instead. That way I just have a few more characters to mess around with. And now let's do string dot index of, and we'll type in a string on the inside of these parentheses here. And let me look for a. So this is a, a new pattern for us. And what we're doing is calling a method called index of on our original string, and I'm passing in a. You can probably read what this code is saying. What it's really trying to do is try to find the index of a 
inside of my string. So I'm going to console.log that to see what it gives back. Index of gives back an index, which I know is a number type, right? So I'll run this code. So where can a be found inside of the string cats? It could be found at index one, right? So I get zero, one over here. So that's a pretty useful, and this works for any characters that you look for, right? So I'll look for T, that should give me a two. I look for S, that should give me a three. And if I look for C, that was the initial character, that'll just give back zero, right? Because zero is the first index. Oh, you're probably also wondering what happens when I try to index of using a character that doesn't exist. Well, let me try to look for a Q. Index of is pretty interesting in that it returns a number still, but it returns you negative one. And so negative one over here represents the fact that, hey, we couldn't find the Q inside of the string, so it doesn't really have a valid index. I know negative one technically is not a real index. And that holds true for anything you can't find, right? So I can't find Z inside of cats. That will also give back a negative one. Index of isn't just limited to searching for single characters. What you can also do is type in a nice longer substring. So I can search for like at inside of cats. And what this will do is it'll look for at inside of your main string. And if it's found, it's going to give you the index where the first character of that substring could be found. So if I look for at, it's going to give me back the index of the A in at. So that should just be one over here. All right, if I made it like ats, if I change it to ats, this would still return index one because I can begin to find the at string at index one. But to return a valid index, it must be the case that the entire substring is found in your main string. So let's say I made this too long and I added ats with like an L at the end of it. That would return negative one because this string is not totally found in cats. So index of is pretty useful. Let me show you a few other patterns we can use with it. So let me create a nice string variable. I'll call it sentence. And I'll make it the sentence, hey everyone, how are you doing? So that'll be my nice sentence string. And let me use index of on it. So I'm gonna console.log. I'm gonna do sentence.index of. Do bear in mind that when you use index of, the string you're looking through goes before the dot and there's a capital O, so don't mess that up. And then the thing you're looking for goes inside of these parentheses over here, right? So what am I looking for in this example? Let's start by looking for the string every. So I'm gonna look is every inside of this sentence. So when I run this code, I know that it's gonna be found, so it should give me a valid index. It should give me the index of this E over here. Because I know that index of returns a number, I can compare that number. So let me check if that is greater than negative one. I know that's gonna give me true, because previously we spoke about the fact that index of returns negative one itself only when the substring is not found in the larger string. So overall, what I just did is write a nice little pattern that gives me a true or false indicating whether or not a substring is found in a larger string, right? So this right now gives me true. If I change it to something else like how, that will also give me true, right? Because I know that this left-hand side of the comparison expression evaluates the index where I can find this how or this h, which I know is going to be greater than negative one, right? So this holds true for everything I can find, even something like r. But if I pass in something invalid as my searching string, like door, that should return false. Because door is nowhere found inside of the string, so I know that this left-hand side of the expression, that is the index of, would evaluate to negative one. And I would check, is negative one greater than negative one, which is false. All right, so this is a really nifty pattern for checking if a substring is inside of a larger string. Just try to remember that index of will return exactly negative one if the thing is not found. And then you can just do some type of comparison to give you a nice Boolean value as your result. So let me show you another method that will find useful. Let me create a nice string, call it my string, and make it equal some characters. I'll say Q, R, S, T, U, and that'll be all. And so what I know is if I index a string, it gives you like a single character of that string, right? So if I index starting at index one, that only gives me the R, right? So it'll give you a single character uh, at a time. You could imagine what if you wanted to grab like a piece of a string? We really refer to that as like a slice of a string in JavaScript. So you can't use this like square bracket indexing pattern. Instead, what you need to use is a method called slice. So let's say I do my string dot slice and I start slicing at index one. So let's run this code. This is a built-in method in JavaScript. And what it will do is give you a piece of the string starting at index one, and it'll go all the way through the end, right? So I get RSTU. I can change my starting index, right? I can grab a slice starting at this index, index two, right? So that'll grab from S all the way through the end. 
Uh, but do bear in mind that the slice method, it gives you back, so it evaluates to a new string. It does not actually change your my string variable. So something that I can write is like let, we'll say substring equals my string dot slice. And then afterwards I'll print out my substring. Right, so it returns a new string, stu in this example, but it does not actually modify the original string. So if I console.log my string, right, which was the original, it still contains a Q through U, right? So that's still intact. So do bear in mind that the slice method gives you back a new string. And what you can also do is give like an end index if you wanted to. So I'm starting at index like one, let's say. And what I can do is pass in a second number over here representing where I want to end. So let me count my indices. I'll go zero, one, two, three. So let me stop at index three over here. And let's see what we get. Notice I get back RS. So we already understand why we get back the first character as R, right? Because that's exactly index one. If I keep counting, it goes one, two, three. Looks like the T is at index three. What you'll actually notice is when you pass a second number into the slice, that does represent the ending index, but it's gonna be excluded, right? So if I made four over here, four is the index of this U, but I'm gonna exclude it from my final result over here, right? So you only get up to the T. So key thing to remember with the slice method is the starting index is inclusive, but the ending index is exclusive. So that's something you're gonna to have to watch out for. So one thing about the slice method is it can actually also accept negative numbers. And what it does in that instance is refer to indices starting at like the end of the string. So let's say I begin to slice at like negative four. So let's go ahead and run this code. We'll see what we get. Now let me still console.log on my substring though, of course. And when we run this pattern of slice negative four, we get back RSTU. And so in this example, negative four refers to the fourth character from the end. And so when I count my indices starting from the end, they go negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And because I only pass in a single number into the slice, it's gonna interpret the negative four as the starting index. So it begins at this R and goes all the way through the end. Right, and this kind of confuses people because when we count our indices using slice starting at the end, right, this U has negative one. So like this T would be negative two. So let's say I change this to negative two, it should just grab the T U because again, we're only passing a single number into slice. So it's gonna start at that index. And you can combine this uh, with the other behavior that we already described about slice. So let's say I begin slicing at index one so I'll start at this R, and what I can say is go up to, but not including the second to last character, right? So I know that negative two, when I use slice, refers to this T, so this should just grab R and S, because again, the end index is always exclusive no matter what. And so bear in mind that these like negative indices, you can only use with slice. So when you do like the built-in like indexing pattern with like square brackets, you can never put like a negative number inside. This is only particular to Slice, and it's just how the developers of JavaScript designed it. All right, so now that we learned about indexing in JavaScript, let's go ahead and practice these patterns and put them to good use. Like I always say, if you want to actually improve as a programmer, then you need to actually write many, many programs, right? So simply watching like these lectures of me coding isn't gonna make you good at coding, so do go to the next video and work on that exercise.